You're listening to Voice Actor Showcase, episode number 21. Hi everyone, and welcome back to Voice Actor Showcase, a podcast about voice actors and their stories. I'm Jun Yoon. Connect with us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Voice Actor Show. These episodes are also available on YouTube on youtube.com slash voicemoto. The Voice Actor Showcase is about the voice actors on their journey to realize the dream of becoming an established voice actor. We're interested in telling the stories of countless voice actors around the world who are working hard to make their dream a reality. Whether that means they're working from a small closet booth somewhere in Mongolia, or have purchased their whisper room just yesterday. Now, if you have an interesting story, and you live outside of the US, I'd especially love to have you on the show. Please contact us by visiting voiceactorshowcase.com. And while you're there, please check out the store and pick up an introverted voice actor shirt or a brand new Record Get Money Get Tacos t-shirt for yourself or for your favorite voice actor. Of course, the sales from the stores will go to supporting the show as well as paying the voice actors in future episodes. Today, we'll meet a voice actor from Manila in the Philippines. Like most of us, she grew up with anime, but like some of us, well, maybe like most of us, again, she still loves watching it. I do too. She's had a pretty rough childhood growing up due to a toxic family environment, but her determination and her sheer will for her own happiness has allowed her to take the necessary steps to move forward. Today, she happily works as a full-time voice actor and continues to soar in her career. She is the Tagalog voice of many beloved and famous characters such as Susan Test of Johnny Test series, Sam Sparks from Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, as well as Gidget in The Secret Life of Pets. Her story is one of overcoming devastating barriers, pushing forward to her own happiness, and finally realizing it. I can't wait to share her story with you. Please welcome Fran Padilla. Francine Padilla, hello! Hi. Welcome to the show, how are you? I'm doing great! It's one in the morning here. Woo. Thank you very much for being on the show. It's super late over there and I'm so sorry. It's fine. It's part of the job. <laughs> Oh man, I can't, I can't do VO at 1am. I don't know how you're doing it. That's amazing. <laughs> this is how it's always been here. <laughs> oh gosh, sorry. Let's, let's just jump right into it so you can go to sleep. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, talk to us about the little friend when you were a kid. You know, what kind of, what kind of kid were you? Um, everybody that I've talked to so far, they've, Grew, they grew up with like cartoons and video games and movies, you know. What kind of kid was Francine? Oh man, uh, well, first off, I was terribly, terribly introverted. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was the kind who didn't really make much friends at school, and when I did, it was about geeking out about whatever was on TV. Um, because like. Pre- like you previously said, I, a lot of voice actors grew up watching a lot of animation, grew up with a lot of video games, and they start aspiring to be part of the things that they grew up with. And I was, I was sort of like that. I grew up with a lot of cartoons and anime, um, especially because um, as a child, my family was always away. Like my, my mom and my grandma, they'd always be um, doing their own thing. And my brother was a lot older than me, so... A lot of the time, I'd spend a lot of um, a lot of my days alone at home. So they just let me watch TV all day. And the thing about here in the Philippines is, during my childhood, our era, like the '90s kids, as you call it, there was a lot of anime that was on TV, either cable, local TV, or even like you switch to the news. They have an anime time slot there. So there's a lot of things to choose from. 
uh, we grew up not only with Dragon Ball, Sailor Moon, but also dubbed versions of Ranma One Half. Oh, um, wow. Pretty Cure. Um, Akazuki and Chacha. And they're, they're usually like, I, I remember things like these shows, One Piece, Akazuki and Chacha, Flame of Rekka, Ranma One Half. They're, they're aimed for a more teenage demographic but here it's like six above (laughs) (laughs) children here were exposed to boobs before they were even considered being censored yeah oh no (laughs) i remember watching ranma one half here uncensored and when when i got um when i grew up and watched watched it on dvds i'm like hey wait why why is it censored i watched this with (laughs) i watched this with ranma's bare chest when i was five Oh, no, not five, like seven. <laughs> so, oh my yeah. goodness. Um, so yeah, I grew up with a lot of anime, and I think that I think our generation has had has been influenced with um, Japanese media one way or another. You know, I I think the two of us really share this fact that we both came from like a, a less than perfect, uh, less than desirable families. Um, uh. I, for one, my, my father was a really abusive person, very mm. violent, and eventually, like, left us behind to start another family, you know what I mean? And so, I was angry, yeah. but I was also very happy to see him go, you know what I mean? It was yeah. one of those things. Um, talk to us about your your growing up, and it don't feel like you have to explain anything, obviously, but I just yeah. want I just, I just to mostly show the audience that... You know, despite unfortunate beginnings that we may come from, one can still cultivate a really fruitful and happy and satisfying life like you have. Tell us your story about that. <laughs> okay. Um, at the time, that was what? Uh, late 90s to early 2000s. Mm. Um, a lot of the people in our family were already growing up uh, with... What do you call this in English? <laughs> <laughs> Like, everyone was getting sick, and, and to put it quite frankly, because, you know, like, the previous generation is dying. <laughs> I'm sorry, my language is so dark. <laughs> Very delicate. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. So, so like, um, it, it, you know, like, I, I personally didn't really grow up being able to connect with my family especially the previous generation and with my own mom because they were always away and i was raised with uh just uh basically my family relied on media to ra- uh to raise me yeah and um it resulted in hey <laughs> what's wrong <laughs> Aww. Doesn't want me telling sad stories. Is he okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's um, Yu Yu, the one that me- meows. He he hasn't had his. He hasn't been demailed yet. I don't know how to make that English. Oh. N- oh. <laughs> I don't ne- know how to. Neutered. 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 That's the English word. <laughs> I get confused between spade and neutered. So I'm like, eh. So yeah, so when he meows like that, that's him saying, "Hey, <laughs> hey." <laughs> oh well. Oh, what a family! I love it. <laughs> so anyway, um, cause I I w- basically wasn't able to have a connection with my with my own mom with my immediate family growing up, mm. and um. Alongside a lot of financial troubles and my family's own, you know, ambitions for me and my brother, it it put a lot of tension and pressure growing up. Despite the troubled past, I mean, what matters more is where you are now and how you got here, right? Okay. And yeah. finding happiness, I think, is a more important motif. Yes. How did you go about, like, discovering what your happiness is and how did you get here? Oh man, uh, here here am I again with my delicate language. Uh, <laughs> I I mentioned troubled uh, toxicity there. That's the word I was looking for earlier. Uh. My family was toxic with, amidst all of our problems, and um, they didn't really exactly agree with my current. Uh, no, not current. They didn't really agree with um, the career choice that I wanted because. 
voice acting for me is sort of just like an in between between a job and a passion. Mm. Like they didn't really they they didn't know about this side of me yet. Back then, I wanted to be a writer. <laughs> I still am. I still pursue well, writing, but which we'll um, talk about later. Absolutely. Yeah, but um. Yeah, I got mad at my family because they were always like, "Oh, you should, you should pursue other things. You should pursue more money-making things." So when they found out that I got my first few stints in into the voice acting industry, they were like, "Oh, you should, you should do the big gun gigs already." So uh. I, uh, it it led to a lot of fights and like I can't climb. I no not I, yeah, that's a word actually. I can't climb that fast to get to the, you know, five. Uh, five digit sums and stuff so I, I basically left I, I I didn't I left on unsavory terms with my family and mm. to, to this day I don't really talk to them because like the toxicity was really bad when I when I left I I even actually just left saying that like I want to heal that sort of thing I, I said yeah. like I said I told them that I, I can't I can't function normally in this environment anymore. I want to be able to heal. So I stayed with my boyfriend for a while and stayed with a bunch of other friends. Like I was pretty much homeless at the time, but then they started sending me threats, my brother specifically. I'm like, nope. So that's when you, hmm. that's when I had to just sever the ties, at least for that for that kind of thing. You you, you can't deal with people who just want to who want to hurt you just because they don't agree with you. Yeah. That's bad. And so, ever since then, it's been... Oh, Are you sad because my story is sad? <laughs> Baby, this this running gag will get old if you keep doing it. <laughs> <laughs> so, now, uh... I, no, I think you use share as your pain. He's very oh. empathetic. He is. I'll talk about you later because he is. Oh man. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, ever since then, I mentioned that I stayed with my boyfriend, but I couldn't really stay at his place either because he still stayed with his family at the time. So I sort of just wandered about Quezon City, Manila, Las Piñas, staying over friends on rotation, until I settled down uh, an apartment with my friend and stayed there. Like, yay! I'm not homeless anymore. <laughs> Wow. So, and from there on, I started focusing on voice acting, and here I am. <laughs> wow. I mean, that's that's really something. And and just the fact that you had the courage, you know, and the motivation to to push forward, that's great. I'm I'm so happy that you've you found your happiness and st and stability. That's great. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, oh yeah, man. right. S stability. I I moved in with my boyfriend a few months ago. Yay! Congratulations! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I'm like I moved in with my friend. I, wait, I think I forgot to mention something. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, I I live with my partner now. And I'm speaking of, and today you have found your happiness. I kind have. of right or yes. perfectly. I don't know. You're <laughs> near. You're near Manila with your fiance boyfriend. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, also working as a full-time voice actor and, and yelling at your cats. I love your videos. I do. <laughs> Tell us about your partner and your cats. Uh, first, my partner, my boyfriend, my husband-to-be. We are to be betrothed. <laughs> Huzzah! Uh, his name is Alon. He, he's not a very social media kind of person, but he tries to be sometimes. He's... Um, <laughs> When when we say when we talk about passion, uh, I mentioned before that my passion lied in writing and animation. I grew up with animation. His is video games, all sorts of video games. So much so that um, he did a bunch of beta testing for a while, and I, oh. I think he still does. He he also dabbled in streaming a bit, and I feel like I, I feel like he mentions every now and then that he wants to get back into streaming a bit. But what's keeping him right now is his job, which he also really enjoys. Um, right now, he's a player support agent in... I I actually forgot the name of the studio. <laughs> or maybe that's just an excuse because it's an NDA and I shouldn't talk oh, about it. Oh, <laughs> no, don't talk about that. No, no, no. <laughs> no, nah, it's okay. I can talk about, I can talk about his, 
position, but not the specifics of it. So I know that he's a player support agent. How did you two meet? We met in college, and that's super weird because, like, okay, no, I'm, I'm gonna talk about how we first met because that's okay. friggin' wild. At, at <laughs> least I consider so. Let's I, do it. Um, I I was like a tra- I was a transfer student here in this here in this uh, college. Ooh, right off the bat, it's sounding anime. <laughs> um, <laughs> so um, I was just trying to get around get around the the. The campus and my first class was English I opened the door not no, uh, like thinking is this the right classroom I opened the door I see him he's hugging his table <laughs> he was hugging what? his table and because I opened the door he looked at me whilst not letting go of the table and so I asked is this English one and he's like yeah and I'm like Okay, I'm gonna go in now. And <laughs> and he just sort of watches me. But as as I pass by to the back of the room because I didn't want to be close to the door, I hear him I hear him uh caress the table, the surface of the table once more and say, <laughs> You are my only friend. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> and then oh. same class, we were introducing ourselves and I was and I'm like you know, I I want to, I want to seem like I'm a serious kind of person. Like I don't want, like I'm here for education. I am a scholar. Yeah. Like so introductions. I'm super serious. Hi, I'm Francine Padilla. Yada yada. And then when he introduced himself, he's like, Hey, I'm Alan. I like One Piece. And I'm like, <laughs> This guy's got attitude. Nice. Huh. Look nice. And then we had our first activity, which was we need we needed to take a picture of um, of anything within the campus, and then when we get back into the room, we have to talk about it, uh, like make a story around it. So I already made a friend with my seatmate at that class, and I joked about it. I have seriously joked about him, like, hey. Hey, you know it'd be a fun picture. I'm gonna take a picture of the toilet, and he's like, "Don't do that. That's gross. What if the teacher gets mad at you? What if the prof gets mad at you?" So I'm like, "Yeah, okay. I'll just take a picture of the cupcakes at the calf." And then I see I see Alan go uh, on his way back to the room. When we when when we were heading back to the room, I see him heading back, and you know, casual blockmates talk. We're like, "Hey, what you take a picture of?" I took a picture of muffins and my and my new friend was like, "I took a picture of shoes." And he Alan <gasps> took a picture of, of a the toilet. toilet. Yes. And I'm like, "Oh my god." <laughs> and that's when and that's when I knew back then we're connected. He's the one. He's the one. Not for <laughs> real. Like I because he took a picture of the toilet. <laughs> when I wanted to take a picture of the toilet, but I got nice. peer pressured into not doing so. <laughs> yeah. What a free spirit. I like him already. That's awesome. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Um, looking through your Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, it's pretty obvious that you are a cat lady. Tell us about your cats. Well, just to clarify, I wasn't a cat lady before I got these cats. <laughs> these, okay, these cats um, were sort of just taken in, um, taken in on a whim by my previous landlady from the old place that I stayed at, mm. because um, they were rescued. They were rescue cats. Um, they were found in a bag and was dumped into a river. Them and their uh, their whole litter. It was sad. Oh my and, gosh. Yeah, so they were taken in. They were taken in by our landlady, but our landlady was like, "Wait, I have a job. <laughs> nah. I can't take care of these." So, us being uh, aside, her being our landlady was also uh, our na- my neighbor. She was like, "Hey, friend, do you want cats?" And I'm like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, "No, it's totally fine. We'll share the expenses." But as soon as I saw them, I'm like. <gasps> They're so precious and tiny. I want to protect them, and that's how <laughs> this whole journey started. Does does everybody in the Philippines speak English like this? So officially, by law, English is our second language. Uh huh. But 
the quality of education of how it is taught so and how you speak it it's almost cliche that like the quality of english that you have also dictates the level of culture intellect and um family income you have oh of course interesting of course that's like that's super classist that's a very classist belief but that is widely quote unquote believed here like huh. poorer families will most likely have poorer quality english like they don't practice the accent very well i don't consider my accent to be all that well in comparison to my peers and such who have had proper training uh because of their job i i, I sort of also trained for my job but I, that's not the point <laughs> <laughs> Because, like, um, call centers, the BPO industry here, um, they, they do train, um, they do train for American English accents and sometimes even British accents because, um, our clients are usually from the US or from the UK, all around the world. So we need to pretend to be American sometimes. <laughs> right. No, no, no. That's a, that's a legitimate thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and, there are also communities here that actually don't speak Filipino much anymore. Um, I'm not going to say this as fact. This is just observation. But yeah. um, you see, there are like Southern, Fili Southern Filipinos and Northern Filipinos. People who grew up in the North or Northeast like me, um, we grew up based with a balance of English and Filipino in our everyday life. I oh. I personally only really started speaking English when I went into college because Alan doesn't speak Tagalog and I'm like I want to talk to him. <laughs> 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 I was motivated. <laughs> <laughs> nice toilet. <laughs> yes. So um yeah, um people from the south like Alan, Alan was raised in the south. Um a lot of the communities there because there are a lot of people who, there are a lot of families who, um, like, migrated back from the U.S. or other parts of the world, and the basically the the next generation that they'd been raising wasn't raised in Filipino because they were in other countries. Oh. So, a lot of people there already speak English as their first language, even though they are native or half Filipino, who live here. Huh. Don't touch my coffee, baby. <laughs> so wow yeah um here in manila where i am because it's a university belt it's um you get a good mix of tagalog speakers english speakers both uh bilingual speakers i guess yeah. i count with that but there are also like Actually, actually, in the recent years, we've had more and more foreigners here, and a lot of other languages are started being have started um, integrating themselves into our curriculum, like Korean, huh. Chinese. So yeah, we're trying to be as multicultural as possible now. <laughs> what a dynamic culture of, of languages and and cultures. That's wow. Yeah, that's really surprising. Oh, another thing, uh, because I said that this is a sort of political thing. Um, Filipino, I, I, I mentioned before that, like, I speak Tagalog because that's my dialect. Um, that's my main dialect. You'll see a lot of Filipinos um, say that they they speak Tagalog or they speak Filipino. Is this a Tagalog dub or a Filipino dub? Is there a difference? Tagalog is the dialect. Filipino is the national language, actually, which is just oh. heavily based on Tagalog. And um, Filipino is considered to be... This is nerd talk now, baby. <laughs> 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 Filipino is a... Um, is a sort of amalgamation and appropriation of Tagalog, which is the dialect that it was mainly based off of tagalog spanish english some chinese and some japanese like b because of the history behind the various coloniza colonizations that the philippines have had so sometimes in filipino you hear things like um 
Hey, that's not Filipino. <laughs> I was about to say <laughs> the timing. <laughs> Just, you hear things like meow. <laughs> I'm like, wait, he said part of Filipino. <laughs> Oh, you, you. Okay, stay there. So, um, where was I? Filipino, English, Spanish. Yeah, amalgamation, amalgamation of different cultures and languages due to uh, colonization. Yeah. So sometimes you'd hear things like, um, "Mama, gusto kong spaghetti." Spaghetti is huh. from a different language because we don't have. The appropriate one, we don't have the appropriate word for spaghetti in Tagalog, so we'll just use the English language, but we'll say it in a Tagalog accent. Huh. <laughs> so what I what I said in Filipino is, Mom, I want spaghetti. I think that's actually super interesting because I, I've studied French for a number of years, Ooh. and there is no appropriate expression for the weekend in French. Huh. I mean, it, it exists, but nobody uses it because it's easier to say le weekend in a, a conversational language oh. rather than try to word it all out. And um, I think there are other, other similar situations in world languages around the world. I think that's super interesting. I, I love languages personally, so <laughs> yeah. it's interesting to me. I, I'm also, I also really love studying language and stuff. Like... Um, the, the stuff about like the dynamic and difference between dialects and Filipino isn't really studied um, in the basic curriculum. It's sort of mm -hmm. just like taught in some courses in college and I sort of just like I read, about, I read about it because it's, it's fun. <laughs> now you're a full-time voice actor. Yes. How long have you been voice acting and how long have you been full-time? My interest in voice acting it has sort of always been there, but only because I've been so interested in animation ever since I was a child. Like as a child, mm. I wanted to I wanted to be a writer. I wanted to write for animation specifically, but um, and voice acting was just sort of like part of that because oh, like the characters on TV they're voiced by people. Whoa, I was like that. So yeah, um, when. Ever since, like, I was in high, uh, grade school, high school. In high school, we had a broadcasting club. I, I was looking back upon it when I was looking through nice. um, our questionnaires. Actually, um, when my my first stint would have been in high school when we had a broadcasting club. That's um, like the PA system at, uh, at public schools or private schools. Yeah. And the thing is, here in the Philippines, there I mentioned earlier unrelated that we grew up on anime well think of this as like an a, a battle shonen tournament arc but for student journalist clubs <laughs> wherein our student <laughs> journalist clubs competed with other student journalist clubs from other schools and we we were to battle it out and find the nationwide champion so our school competed in that um we had the newspaper club, the yeah, the campus journalists club, the broadcasting club. I was in both clubs, so that was weird. But the broadcasting club, <laughs> I I was the person in charge of technicals because I can do the funny voices. So you're like, you can make the effects, right? <laughs> <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh man, I kind of hated doing that. Oh, but oh. um. But uh, one of the things I like, I mean, this is so stupid. We had toy guns and everything, and I just keep making sounds as the announcer was doing the news, because hype, I guess. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, my, my first voice acted, quote unquote, my first voice acted stint in the broadcasting club was the PSA, <laughs> wherein I had to sound like a like a cartoon child, as they put it. Um, what was that line? And like, reduce, reuse, recycle. Those are the keys to saving the environment. Yeah, that sort of thing. Wow. <laughs> My voice back then sounded sounded much teenier, so it was closer to Minnie Mouse. We were pretending that it was supposed to be like a Minnie Mouse sort of mascot. Wow. And 
I think we placed second in the... What do you call this? In the intermediate, intermediary fi things. But we, we weren't able to do nationwide as a broadcasting team. I smell an original anime series. I do. You know, I mean, instead of like chefs in a prestigious school going for cooking competitions or volleyball with orange hair, it's uh, broadcasters I competing know, with right? other schools. <laughs> <laughs> I hear it. I can see it. I know, right? We were also joking about it when we were kids. Like, we grew up on anime. We'd be like, ah, <laughs> oh, here comes the tournament arc. <laughs> I like it. Right to, right to, uh, right to, um, Rooster Teeth, right now. Do it. <laughs> they might pick it up. <laughs> and now your focus today is dubbing existing characters in Filipino for the Philippines market. Um, you talked about a cartoon short you worked on in college. Tell us about that. Okay. So um, that was sort of just like um, an animation org organization sort of thing. It was in English. Yeah. Um, and... I consider that to be my first time, first gig as a voice actress. Ah. Although, at, although at the time I was a production assistant back then. Um, this was already when I left college, and I'm like, I don't want to be a waitress anymore, so I'm gonna go into <laughs> production. Um, and these um, these production people were like, "Hey, you know, you can do a lot of funny voices, and you talk." And you talk really well, so why not go into voice acting? There's this audition right now at your at your alumni, actually. So I'm like, oh, really? Okay, I'll try. Yeah. Like, and when I did, um, I got the notification that, oh, I'm going to be cast for a role in it. Cool. So I went there, and there were other... There were these supposed to be my co-actors, right? And they were all students in the in the university itself. The thing is, they miss. <laughs> they hecked up with the files. They messed up with naming the files, and turns oh, no. out the auditions that passed were all me. Oh no! <laughs> Big oh no! I felt so bad for the other two because when they found out that they couldn't do the voice that was in the audition clip because it was me, Ooh. they were like, they were like, oh well, what are we gonna do with these people now? And I'm like. I don't want to be here anymore. So talented. But, That's amazing. Uh, I hated it. But yeah, um, I became the three main characters for that. Um, I don't know what happened to it, actually. I think it's it's, it's a thing. I, I mean, I, I still have the animatic for it with my voice <laughs> files. And I still consider that one of my best performances, even though it was my first. It's like, it holds a special place in my heart. Yeah. Like, my, like, baby's first project. <laughs> 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 it's that sort of thing that you hang on your fridge and, and gawk <laughs> at it, even though it's, it's sort of, it, you hear how many breaths you had, you had to take, how many takes you had to take with that. But it still holds a special place in your heart. Nice, nice, yeah. and and that and that amazing talent has led you to some really interesting projects, right? Um, you are the Filipino version of Susan Test of the Johnny Test series. Now yeah. tell us, tell us that story: the audition process, booking it, and then and then performing it. Oh man! Okay, so um, maybe me having the chance to audition for that was actually because um at this time uh hey it was <laughs> about a year or so, a year and a half after my first stint at as that um what do you call this that animation short that i worked on mm -hmm. um this was like yeah, I'm a voice actor. I'm going to be a really serious voice actor. So I enrolled in a voice acting workshop here. And the guy, the person hosting the workshop is... A, um, he gets... He's a casting director. And he gets clients from... He, he works for a network here that I can't talk about. <laughs> specifically, right, right. the name. But... Everyone should know about it. If you're if you're from the Philippines listening, you should know you you know what I'm talking about. They get <laughs> <laughs> they get um, shows from 
they they have a cartoon channel that's all dubbed in Tagalog. So he is one of the consistent casting directors for that. Mm. So um, they open slots for auditions for Johnny Test, and um, Sir Sir Alex, our instructor, only opened the opportunity for us because we were his students. <laughs> so I was, and oh man, I remember the audition for that was so nerve wracking because I sort of felt bad actually because um, you have these voice actors from all around the. Manila, actually, like people who have voiced our childhoods, mm-hmm. and then they gave priority to us students because we're his students. And I'm like, oh man, wow, the pressure is real. Yeah, and the direction that um, Sir Sir Alex gave us gave me at the time of the audition was, don't do anything with your voice, just use your own voice. So I'm like, okay. So I did it. And then after a few months, we got the confirmation that he broke the news. And like, hey, friend, you're, you're, congratulations. You're Susan Tess. I'm like, what? Wow. Wow. <laughs> and, and the person who was going to play Mary, uh, Susan's twin, was one of the voice actresses who voiced a lot of other characters. And I remember her from wow. my own childhood. And she also voices a bunch of things in... in she she's the she's a voice in one of the supermarkets I frequent that so wow. I, I hear her a lot when I <laughs> go to the grocery. <laughs> so I'm like it's so surreal. Whenever I go to that grocery uh, and uh, when I'm with Alan, I'm like, hey, it's Mary. <laughs> I go like that, and she, and he's like, yes, your twin. <laughs> Fish on sale. Yeah, thanks, Mary. <laughs> So yeah, and we were just using our natural voice. Like Sir A- Sir Alex didn't want us to go the um, the character voice route for it. So this voice that you hear is Susan Test's voice in Filipino. Wow, that's that's awesome. That's so great. What a great item on your resume, right? <laughs> Thank you. That's great. And on top of that, you're also the voice of Sam Sparks, the yes. of the animated film Cloudy with the Chance of Meatballs. Tell us about that one. So with Sam Sparks, it was admittedly a bit of a rush job. So because it was just it was a rush job, um, the director picked me um, out of out of her talent pool, and she <laughs> the direction I was given each time was just. Just use your natural voice, but as a reporter. <laughs> so I'm like, so basically the character. I'm like, yeah, you know what to do. <laughs> like, okay, there's no room for critique anymore. <laughs> so, nice. So that's um, like, yeah, sort of like this, but just a bit more projected, I guess. I'm like, yeah. And that, and I'm Sam Sparks. Ah. Just like that. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> And lastly, I think this is definitely my favorite. You're the Tagalog voice of Gidget. Yes! In The Secret Life of Pets. <laughs> Tell us about that story. Oh, you're quiet now because the character is a dog. <laughs> <laughs> They're sleeping. Oh, They're gotcha. sleeping in the hall. Okay, so Gidget is... Okay. Um, I remember the dub for this. Um, the dubbing session was a bit... Wait, when did we dub this? It was a bit after a party, mm-hmm. and I got drunk. I got oh drunk no! At that party. <laughs> no, it because the party was by the studio itself. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> and gotcha. Then... <laughs> I was like, you showed up. All right, I'm ready. No, Give me my the... microphone. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't like a next day after a party sort of thing. But um, so um, the studio hosted that party, and they got to see me drunk. Also because I mixed the drinks for them because they knew that I, I, <laughs> I was a bartender. Right, right. And they also got to hear me be have a really hoarse voice. And the director said that's the voice that they wanted for Gidget in Tagalog because the original voice pr- actress for Gidget is uh, raspy, sort of a hoarse voice, but also squeaky. Yeah. So they're like, you need to emulate that time when you were drunk and or sick. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm like, 
this is a bit of a tall order <laughs> because I wasn't sick at the time. <laughs> sort of weird when like you record, you know this thing when like sometimes when um you have to record while you're sick because it's a scheduled thing, and in the next session you have to, yeah um you have to not sound sick. This was the reverse. I needed to sound sick. <laughs> It's a tough. It's a tough job being a voice actor. <laughs> it is truly. It's so fun. It, so we got to play around with it, and I don't know. They thought it was okay. What was that thing like? Um, <laughs> Max, uh, 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 there. Max is out there, alone, scared, and truly, truly handsome. Something like that. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I bet it sounds better in Tagalog because, like, English is hard. Ah, uh, awesome. So awesome. Oh, man. And, and on top of all this talent that uh. comes from your vocal box, you're also a writer, right? Yes. You're currently working on a web novel. Um, I, I know you don't want to tell us too much about that, but give us, a, give us a little bit. Give us a little bit. Okay. Um, the central story is about a young girl, a child, a child wizard, or aspire, um, wizard to be is what she call. She already calls herself a great wizard, but like, um, she's an aspiring wizard who plans to follow the footsteps of her idol, who was once the greatest, most powerful wizard in all of the land. Ah. Oh. And in order to do that, she just has to overcome one hurdle, and that hurdle is her older brother. <laughs> <laughs> now, her older brother, she wants to beat her older brother in restaurant management. <laughs> so she... <laughs> <laughs> so she opens a cafe. <laughs> she opens a magic cafe to compete with her brother. And her plan is, if she can become the best cafe owner in the district, she can be the best wizard in the world. <laughs> <laughs> wow! <laughs> <So radical>. <laughs> wow! <laughs> that is that is so wildly original. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> nice, nice. And, I mean, I really, no matter how you look at it, it's it's a, a really, really impressive list of things, performances, roles, projects that anybody really would be proud of. I'm I'm so happy. Like your happiness has really led to these great opportunities and projects that you've worked on and are currently working on. I can tell in your voice how like passionate and happy you are. And I'm so happy <laughs> that you are. I mean, goodness. Oh, thank you. I, I think I, I also think that we get stuck in this rut, you know, of money and fame or whatever. Um, yeah. But pursuing happiness matters more, you know? Yeah. The thing about pursuing happiness is like i i feel very fortunate in that i get to do these things that i want and it just happens also to bring me my source of income um let me live my daily life the way that i'm supposed to yeah um but i think that happiness matters from person to person hmm. and like just because that like this is my kind of happiness where I'm writing, I'm voice acting, ah, no sleep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just because that's my kind of happiness doesn't mean that like um, every everyone I know should should have this sort of lifestyle. No, I would never recommend anyone to be into production. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm happy in it. It doesn't mean that it's good for your health. <laughs> but anyway. Um, I think that in order to in order to be able to find your own happiness, you have to find what suits you best. Yeah. Like and move along in your own pace. Cuz I certainly wouldn't be this happy in my life if I say I'd been pressuring myself to be like, "Oh, I have to excel. I have to be the best voice actor that I have to, that I can. I have to earn six figures a month." Like that's not that's not gonna be happy. But there's someone out there who would love and would be more than happy yeah. <laughs> to be actively pursuing that kind of income. Uh, 
you know, six figures aren't bad. (laughs) 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 Um, And there are other people that enjoy, um, enjoy other forms of happiness, like, just like, um, doing a standard nine to five job or like Alan, he's, He's really happy with his current job, even even if it's like just a quote unquote standard day job mm. that um, a lot of other creatives might frown upon because oh, it's just a desk job. To him, it's not. It's his passion. It's working in games. So yeah, happiness is relative to who you are. Yeah, yeah, I'd agree with that. I absolutely agree with that. I mean, there's plenty of people out there that only do like audiobooks and they're super happy you know they don't need to get on a commercial or animation they just Mm -hmm. narrate audiobooks and they make enough money to get by and they're very happy you know yeah yeah okay i mean and the following questions i ask everybody ready yes what does your recording space and equipment currently look like and what did you start out with well actually i'm um with this call i'm using what I started with, which is the Samsung Go. <laughs> um, I started with the Samsung Go because yeah, it's cheap. It's a yeah. cheap USB mic and it's sort of entry level. I'm sorry, I'm touching the wire. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, it gets the job done, but it's not the best. But with the right audio treatment, it, it works wonders as well. Um, with the Zoom H1N, I bought this last year, just last year. Um, I just use it because it's portable and convenient because with my current with my current job of aside voice acting I also have to travel to meet with other people clients um locally and sometimes people will just be like uh, um I get a text from a different client or a casting director They're like hey Fran can you send me a sample so I'm just going to whip out my portable recorder <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and record somewhere quiet so I found that to be much more um, practical than having a studio set up here at home. Also because um, the apartment I'm we are at now is currently on lease, just on mm. lease. So um, the possibility of us moving to a different place or hopefully to our forever home sort of thing um, is there. And I don't want to lug around big equipment. <laughs> so I'll only I can only see myself um, getting my own. St- uh, studio equipment, recording studio equipment when I'm, when I've moved to a more stable home. I mean, but most of your work is done in studio anyway, so you don't really have a need for a home studio, do you? Oh, actually, yeah. Um, and when I, when the the clients that I have that require me to record at home, they, they they make do with the H1N and some of the work that I've done with the H1N has already made it to TV. Yeah. But usually, yeah, um, I, I do get called into studios for work. Now, what are some goals for yourself professionally and personally, short term and long term? Short term goals. Well, I have on tab here, I'm, I've been working on my website at the side. Mm. <laughs> And I've been compiling some Tagalog files, some Filipino files, and some mo- some of my more recent English works to compile into separate reels. Although the top priority for a professional goal would be to get this production done, because it's really getting in the way of my voiceovers, and I really want to get back into voiceovers really fast. Um, and my novel. I want it to happen within the year. Yeah. Alan gives me crap about it all the time. He's like, how are you with your writing? I want to see it. And one time he made fun of me. He was like, you know what you are, Boo? You're like a greedy emperor holding this, <laughs> holding a vine of grapes. You, you, you take a grape, you eat it in front of me. You're starving audience. You eat the grape and turn to me. One more month. You say as you push your deadline. He, he went like that to me. And I'm like, you know, you're right. <laughs> so I really want to finish it this year. What a loving relationship. Oh, <laughs> Actively you. teasing each other. That's, hey, you know, couples that make fun of each other, it, it are the ones that stay together longest. It's, 
That's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree though. So attack I him agree. as much as you can. There you go. That's oh the heck yeah! Life lesson. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <sighs> okay, I mean let's let's imagine this scenario. It's two a.m. You've had a full day of production management and voiceover projects you had to do, and now you're finally home. So you start up your favorite anime, and then. Get a drink, cause you need one. What show are you watching, and what are you drinking? Back to that questionnaire thing I mentioned. <laughs> I prepared a list. It's a page long, but I'm just gonna. <laughs> but I don't want to say all of it because one, it's embarrassing. Two, some of them is hentai. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> edit it! Edit! Edit! <laughs> edit! <laughs> <laughs> and. Three, it's just w way too long. So, um, in my downtime, when I when I'm one when I'm stuck in a rut and it's like I had a bad day, um, I like rewatching some of my favorites. Um, yeah. Like specifically episode six of Shirabako, or episode three of Made in Abyss. I really listed these episodes. Yeah. Just for those two. I can tell. <laughs> just for That's those two. Episode numbers. Wow. If I talk about all of them, I'll just you'll just end up with a three hour podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's super healthy and really great to have a list like that. You're obviously super passionate about anime. I'm a huge weeb as well. I mean, come on. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, last question. Yes. What's next for Francine Padilla? What do you have coming up? Where do you go from here? And if the listeners want to find out more about you, where can they go to find you? If they want more of my random gibberish, they can head on over to my Twitter at VA underscore Frandesal. I post cats, I retweet art, animation, and sometimes behind the scenes of my of the work that I do here in the Philippines and other things like life like cats. I think cats <laughs> cats lots of videos of cats my media tab is 90% cats 98% cats <laughs> it says on my bio is there anything that's coming up that you can talk about with us well one my novel yes uh, yeah it's I want it to come out this year. Yeah. I will. Say, saying it in public helps motivate to not procrastinate over it. Those are English words that I said just now. That's right. And then the <laughs> listeners will be hounding you. You know what I mean? Where is that novel? Friend? Yeah, right? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, um, we just finished a dub for um, for the people in the Philippines who... May, may be watching a certain network. <laughs> One of the du Tagalog dub movies you will see is Commando from uh, the, this 80s movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger. <gasps> I was the child there, Jenny. Oh. And I also did a bunch of voiceovers for it, like the phone, the um, stuff. Oh. Yeah. And you'll probably hear me in uh, Holy Week as well. Because <laughs> <laughs> we'll be dubbing a lot of Holy Week specials. All part of the job. <laughs> wow, that's, that's exciting. That's super exciting. And I'm happy that you're booking these gigs. I mean, rent's got to get paid, sure. But to do what you love to do, you know? Yeah. I, I'm so happy for you. Thank you so much, June. Oh, my gosh. Francine, thank you so much for spending some time here with me today. It's been a great conversation, and I, I just loved having you. I, I loved it. Thank you. Ah, thank you so much, June, for having me. It's, this, this is my first time to be in a thing, so I really appreciate I appreciate your patience, and I appreciate the time that you will do to edit this thing. <laughs> and people, please visit her Twitter page. Send some love. Absolutely. Send some love to her cats, too. Yes! <laughs> yes! Thank you very much, Francine. <laughs> Thank you as well, June. This has been Voice Actor Showcase. Visit our website at voiceactorshowcase.com. If you'd like to be featured on this podcast, contact us 
at voiceactorshowcase.com. Thanks for listening.